Hi guys, it's Janet. I have Ernest Eugene with me from the Orlando Magic. He's currently in the bubble right now, the NBA bubble. So I'm going to have him talk about that a little bit. Welcome, Ernest. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Janet. Excited to be here. So tell us a little bit about the bubble right now. What has it been like for you personally as an athletic trainer and being away from your family and friends? Well, today we're it's day 44 for our team in the in the Disney campus. They call the bubble. Uh, as an athletic trainer, I think it's helped me learn a lot about how valuable we are as athletic trainers to our schools, to our organizations, et cetera. Obviously, we do the things that fall into our domain as athletic trainers, but we're also asked to carry a torch, if you would, of being the first line of defense when it comes to the healthcare of our athletes and the safety of our athletes. And that goes from enforcing, are they wearing their mask and are they doing their daily check-ins, daily check-ins, which is on an app for us, are they doing their daily testing as well? And if something's not in line, again, we become the first line of defense. So as an athletic trainer, it makes us feel like we have a very important presence on the health and safety of our athletes. So, uh, to, to me, that's that's very uh, that's very touching for me because usually, sometimes as athletic trainers, we see ourselves as oh, we're just there to tape or we're just there to take care of their injuries. But we have because of this whole COVID thing, fortunately and unfortunately, but we have more of a presence now. We're more we're we're, we're in an important entity of our organization of our schools, and I think that's going to start showing more and more as everything unfolds with things opening back up in COVID. And how about being away from family and friends while you're in this bubble? Oh, that's the tough one right there. Uh, my wife's a saint in regards to how she's handling all of this for sure. Uh, my kids, again, it's been 44 days for us and uh, we're trying to get to 90, obviously, or past 90, whatever that gets us through the finals. Uh, but it's definitely something that it's a sacrifice that we're making. The world is excited to see sports come back. The world's excited to see NBA basketball again, but uh, it's at the expense and sacrifices of us being away from our loved ones. So that's very, very tough. Uh, I try to be, but it's helped me learn to be even creative again in regards to things that you do to stay in touch with your family. Obviously there's FaceTime and all of that, but, Maybe you send an email instead of sending a thousand emails that you send a day. Maybe you send an email to your kid. Maybe you send an email to your significant other. Maybe you write a quick note, write a letter and actually mail it out. It's making you be creative on those things again. I just celebrated an anniversary. And so I had to be creative in how I got the gift for the anniversary to where to, to my wife. So like all of those things to me made you makes you think like, hey, I can't just wake up the day before and go, hey, let me go pick this up, or whatever. So it's getting the creative juices flowing in regards to how do you connect with your family? And I like it a lot. Very cool. Next question, being in the position that you're at, do you ever feel like there's a lot of pressure on you to be a role model, like a role model athletic trainer? Oh, absolutely. So we, uh, I've had the opportunity and I've been fortunate enough to speak to uh, a few different programs, graduate level programs that are uh, bringing up the next up and coming athletic trainers and uh, everybody wants to be in a professional setting. Everybody wants to be, I want to be in the NBA. Hey, I want to be in the NFL, et cetera, et cetera. And so the advice you give them to get there is very important because they look to you as a role model, but I think just as they look to me as a role model, I think those clinicians that they're working with in their uh, rotations and in their clinical experiences, those need to be the role models because uh, they're the ones that are teaching them and they're the ones that they're going to form this connection with because everybody wants to hire somebody that they know or that has worked for someone that they know. So to me, that's extremely important. So if I want to hire somebody from ABC University and they had an experience at XYZ Clinic or a clinical rotation or university, whatever it may be, it's important for me to know how they handled that. So one of the biggest things I like to tell those students is, hey, you need to do a great job of where you are today and the connections will come, but 
don't forget to take care of home, meaning don't forget to do the daily things that you're doing every day in your clinical settings and be the best at that because that person knows somebody that knows someone else that's going to get you to where you want to be. So I, I think I, I think that's extremely important to tell them. The second thing I think it's important to tell them as well, is, or the second thing as a role model to me that's important is how we display our profession on TV or in the live media, et cetera, et cetera. So if I'm taking care of something, how I handle it is going to be judged. It's not only going to be judged by uh, my fellow athletic trainers, but it's also going to be judged by the media. Hey, this person didn't do this right. This person should have handled this better. So every decision we make, we have 10,000 eyes on us. And although all of us have done this, we go out to the field, we go out to the court, someone gets hurt, and then all of a sudden we, we, uh, we don't see anybody else in the arena. We don't see anybody else in the stadium except for us and that athlete, and we're there to take care of them. So the pressure, we're used to that. That's not an issue to us. But how we handle things is important. So to me, no matter how big or how small the job is that we need to do, we need to do it as if we're doing it for our exam again, as if we're doing it to, uh, we're learning. So if I'm doing a knee assessment and I'm doing an on-field knee assessment, I need to look for different signs and symptoms. I need to, I need to rule out catastrophic injuries. I need to do all of those things again, because if I forget to do that, it'll be on pardon the interruption or something like that, you know? So uh, I think when I go out to the field or I'm sorry, to the court and I assess an injury, I'm representing us all to show all of our knowledge bases, not just mine. So I hope I'm doing an okay job there. <laughs> I, I, I think you are. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, on a more personal note and to current events, a lot of parents have been needing to either have the talk with their kids about working with the police or how to deal with the police. What has that experience been like for you? So I've been struggling with that one a lot. So I've got a 11 year old who turns 11 Sunday, actually, and uh, he started middle school. They started school here couple weeks ago now and it's virtual but uh that's something that I struggle with because there's not only the talk talk but now this is the other talk to have and now you're going to middle school and you're going to encounter different things and because he's African-American and because he he uh has black or brown skin now he's going to have a stigma on him so People are going to always think that he's the troublemaker and he is the person that's causing the issues. So how do we not how do we make sure he doesn't have that stigma? The second thing I would say is uh, we've, we've lived in different places around the country and there's been places where that stigma is stronger than others. And so it's important that uh, for me, I teach our kids that you need to carry yourself in a certain way and to portray yourself in a certain way. So might that be how you handle things? You're not lying. You're not cheating. You're making sure that you're telling the truth on, no matter what your emotional state may be from it. But you need to also be making sure you're doing that. But also have to teach them how to be street smart as well. You're not going to have being street smart, obviously, is you're not going to walk down a dark alley at three o'clock in the morning by yourself thinking everything's hunky dory, no matter where you are in this world. So being street smart to me means if you see trouble somewhere, you kind of steer the other direction. So if you see people who look like they're causing trouble, looking like they're looking to pick a fight, looking like that's they're not doing the right thing, you don't just walk straight there. You veer another direction. So you keep yourself away from that. So that's something that I want to make sure that I'm helping our, obviously our 11 year old, but our younger kids as well know like, hey, this exists in the world. And because of the color of your skin or because of your race or ethnicity, you're going to be tied to these things a lot. So how do you make sure you don't get tied to this is by doing X, Y, and Z, one, two, three. So uh, I'll let you know when I figure it out how to best tell them, but I think it's gonna be important, especially if they get to the point where school starts back up and they're going to school again. All right, next couple minutes, all yours. Ernest Eugene, your final statements. 
my final statements to uh, everyone is no matter what your profession is, it doesn't matter if you're a housekeeper, it doesn't matter if you're an athletic trainer, it doesn't matter if you're a physician, it doesn't matter if you're president of the United States, no matter how small, well, first of all, the, the most important thing to me is passion about anything that you do. If you have passion behind anything that you do, you'll succeed at it. But if you don't have passion, there'll be little room for success at that point. So what I mean by that is no matter how big or how small the job that you're asked to do is, you do it to the best of your ability. So one of my favorite examples of that is, uh, obviously we all came up in a clinical setting and being an athletic training student, and you may be asked to change a bag in the wastebasket in the athletic training room, right? So how you do that is important. So you could easily open the bag, do that, put it inside the, the wastebasket and be done. But the minute that one athlete puts the ice bag in there, what's going to happen to the bag? It's going to fall through and it's not going to be holding up in the wastebasket anymore. Or you can be passionate about it and do it to the best of your ability where you take the bag, you put it in, you tie the knot around it. So we make sure if somebody puts an ice bag in there, which we know is a big no-no in our field, then we go, oh, okay, the, the trash bag is not going to fall in. So to me, I give that example because it doesn't matter if you're doing a rehab, right? You, you may have done a rehab a thousand times for an ankle sprain, but that ankle sprain rehab to that athlete or to that patient is one of the most important ankle sprain rehabs to them. So we have to do it with so much passion that we do it to the best of our ability. And that's, that goes back to when you're evaluating an ankle or a knee on the field or on court, whatever it may be. I think that's important, but that's not only, only uh, applying to athletic training. It applies to how you run your clinic if you're a physician, how you run your hospital if you're the president of a hospital, how you run your department if you're the housekeeping director at a hotel. It, it doesn't matter how big or how small your job is. Uh, I shouldn't say big or small your job is. It doesn't matter your job. Anything that you do needs to be done with 100% passion. The second thing I, uh, I leave as a closing statement is anybody can accomplish any goal that they want. They put their mind to it, they uh, apply themselves to it, and they work towards it every day, you'll accomplish it. And those are things that we sometimes forget as professionals and as students that we think, hey, things are just gonna fall in our lap. Like, oh, I'm gonna be in the NBA, it's gonna fall in my lap. No, it doesn't work that way. We have to apply ourselves, we have to put our mind to it, we have to work at it every day. And those that work at something every day are, who, are those that, accomplish the goals that they want to accomplish. Thank you so much for doing this with me. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Of course. Bye.